So today we are going to learn about uh, fault tree and event tree analysis. First, we will start with the fault tree analysis and then we will go to the event tree analysis. Folks, uh, please confirm me you can hear me correctly or if you have any problem with my voice or anything. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Darshana. Folks, uh, these two methods, faulty analysis and uh, Event tree analysis. These are from uh, ENGI 9115 Safety and Risk Engineering, where I teach them these methods as the basics of safety and risk engineering. But uh, as I said in my very first lecture, there is no prerequisition. So I just don't want to use these words, and you are just stumbling around how to learn about them. So I decided to include them in this lecture so that you can have some basic uh, concept because I need to use both of these things in our upcoming lectures. So it is best uh, if you learn about them now. So in the faulty analysis, this is the method that we use uh, for determining the causes of an event. So in the faulty analysis, we perform uh, a methodology which provides us the different causes of an event. Now, fault tree is a graphic uh, model. By that, uh, it means to say we will draw it in just like a geometry or a model diagram that displays the various combination of normal event by the use of logic gates. Allow me a couple of minutes, then I will explain them in details. What does the logic gates means? Equipment failures, human errors, and environmental factors that can result in an accident. I highlighted the word of the failure here because faulty analysis is always used to understand an undesirable event. Event of the interest is placed at the top, which is called as a top event in fault tree. Causes of events are placed underneath. This is what uh, we were talking last time, if you recall our last lecture, and are linked to the top event using logic gates. The faulty analysis starts uh, with the top event. As I mentioned, this is an uh, undesirable event. We don't want this to happen. And this is the reason that we are studying what are the different causes which leads to undesirable event, which should be carefully defined, and then it proceeds downwards. The top event is linked to the preceding events and conditions, such as technical factors, human factors, biologic gates, at your course, uh, even at advanced safety, there are only two gates that you will be using. One is called AND gate, A N D, other is called as OR gate, O R gate. How do you make a fault tree diagram? Folks, there are four steps that you need to keep in mind when you are going to develop a fault tree diagram. The first one is we need to define the undesired event. What is the problem that you want to study here? What can, what can go wrong? That's what is the undesired event. In some of the text, you will also see it is this undesirable event or the top event is also written as a primary fault or the failure that is being analyzed. So my first step is, I need to define what is my undesired event. The second step is you need to deduce, which means you need to conclude by reasoning. You need to provide logical reasoning 
which define the immediate causes of uh, top event and link them through logic gates. So this is my second step here. The third step is we keep repeating this procedure until the most uh, basic causes are identified. This is my third step. And the last step is we evaluate our fault tree analysis. When I say evaluate, so there are two kinds of the evaluation in the fault tree. The first is the qualitative evaluation. And the second type is the quantitative evaluation. So from the qualitative, I mean to say, we just draw our fault tree diagram without any numbers. Whereas in the quantitative, we use some probability values in order to calculate the probability of our top event. That's what is the quantitative uh, evaluation. So one more time, the first step is you need to define your undesired event. Second step is you need to provide some logical reasoning and connect them through logic gates. The third is you keep repeating until you reach the most basic causes. The most basic causes cannot be further divided. That's what uh, will indicate you will have to stop your fault tree. And the last step is you evaluate your fault tree analysis. Now this is the basic uh, structure of a fault tree analysis. This here is the undesired event. This is what we call as a top event. Now just keep in mind the top event is always placed in a rectangular shape. Then you connect this top event with some events which are called intermediate or undesirable events. These undes intermediate uh, undesirable events, they are also placed in terms of a rectangular. Any kind of a shape that you are seeing in front of you it has a specific meaning in safety and risk engineering. This is also an intermediate event. As I mentioned you, you need to define your top event and then you need to define your intermediate event and link them through some logic gate. This shape of the gate that you see, it's similar here. This is what we call as the AND gate. A and D. I will come to the definition in just a few minutes. If you have the shape something like this, this is what we call as an OR gate. So allow me to go back and rebuild this. So my first step was I need to define my undesired event. So I define my undesired event because it is a top event. It is always coming in a rectangular. The second event is we need to deduce, which means conclude by listening the immediate causes of the top event and link them through logic gates. So I identified as, so these are uh, my intermediate undesirable event, which are linked to AND gate at the moment to your top event. It could be OR gate and events as well. It depends on the problem. We will do some practice uh, in today's lecture. Now, once you have defined top event and has linked your intermediate undesirable events to the top event using a logic gate, then we further classify our intermediate undesirable events and link them through a gate. The circle here is the primary cause or the basic event. Whenever you are at a basic event, you need to represent it using the circles. Just like uh, this circle, it could be any event here. It is describing me that this event cannot be further classified. 
and how these two basic events are linked to the intermediate undesirable event they are linked through an AND gate coming to here these two basic events they are linked to intermediate undesirable event through an OR gate as you can see here they are linked, linked through an OR gate again it depends on the problem this is just a general structure it will change uh, with every problem whatever you're doing so the basic thing is you need to understand it how you develop it and then apply on your given problems I do have uh, some practice questions for you to do today in today's lecture about this and I do have some homework for you to do. Let's come to the gate symbols here. This is the symbols which I showed you in my previous slide is the AND gate. You use the AND gate when the output event occurs if all inputs input events occur simultaneously. That's what is where we use an AND gate. In terms of uh, OR gate, the output event occurs if any of the input events occur. And that's what uh, the symbols that you use for an OR gate. So I will repeat it myself again. AND gate uh, you will use when all the inputs occur simultaneously only then the top event can occur or the intermediate event whereas in the OR gate any one of the input should occur for example in order to have the failure of the top event let's say there are three possibilities if you are using an OR gate and let's say the three fails then the top event will fail because any of the event has been failed however in terms of the AND gate if one is success two is success three is success only then you can get a success here so these are the two gates uh, that you will be using mostly any type of the gate symbol that you will see in next i just include them to show you that we work uh, when you do research of course then you see the and use these kinds of the symbols just like inhibit gate and priority gate exclusive gate m out of n gate but we are not using them in this course if you are a phd research students or mass mng students you might use them but for now only two gates that we are using in this course is the and gate and or gate The circuit which I show you, this indicates a basic event. So whenever you are at a basic event, you just uh, represent that in a circuit. If you are using that rectangular, this one shows the intermediate events. The event represented by a gate through the intermediate event. So that's what we use a rectangular in order to show it for intermediate event I use the word of uh, quantitative analysis of uh, a fault tree so in the quantitative analysis of the fault tree analysis these and uh, and or gate both of them has a specific uh, algebra which is called boolean algebra so if you're using any AND gate, just like this one in your problem, and you want to quantitatively find out the probability here, what you need to do, you just need to multiply the probabilities of your basic events. So AND is all inputs are required to cause the output. So let's say I have the, I have the probability of point 0.1 here and the probability of point 0.2. I want to find out uh, what is the probability of A. So according to my Boolean algebra of AND gate, I just uh, simply multiply the probabilities. 0.1 times 0.2, that's what will give me my probability of top event, which is A. 
it could be a top event or it could be an intermediate event depending upon the problem so the important uh, message from this slide is when you have the AND gate you need to multiply the probabilities of your basic events in order to find the probability of your either top event or a intermediate event The second uh, gate that we are using is an OR gate. In the OR gate, the algorithm or the Boolean algebra that you use uses, you add up the probabilities of the basic events and then you subtract their products. For example, let's say I have the probability of 0.1 here and 0.2. And I want to find out what is the probability of my top event. So according to, because I'm using an OR gate here, how do I know? Because I can see that this is the shape I have given to my problem, which is for the OR gate. So according to my Boolean algebra, I will take the probability of the B, which is 0.1, plus the probability of my C event, which is 0.2, and then I subtract the product, which will be 0.1 multiplied by 0.2. The answer you get is your probability of your top event, which is A. And this is what we call as the quantitative analysis of your fault tree analysis. Now, some of the rules and conventions that you need to remember. If you are defining a problem and you are using either AND or OR gate, if you take uh, branches out from different pointers, it is the same as you are taking one branch and then dividing it. There is no difference uh, between these two. This rule is important. Please do not uh, let the gate feed gates. So the gates uh, should not uh, be input to the next gates or the output to the next gate. They must always be some intermediate event between them. So the gate cannot be connected. This is my AND gate here and this is my OR gate. So the gate cannot be connected with this second gate. They must always be some intermediate event between them. This is my AND gate and this is my OR gate. Folks, I'm going to do this example and I want you to do it with me on your papers, please. It says that the system represented in the figure illustrates the operation of a lamp fed by two batteries. In order to have power in the circuit, it is enough that one of the batteries works. Build the fault tree for the event. Now, what is the top event he is giving us here? It's a failure on the lightning system. Now, before we develop our fault tree, let's understand what our system is here. I can see that we have a lamp here which is uh, connected uh, through two batteries and these batteries are coming in parallel which means if uh, one of them fails the lump uh, will still work because they are in the parallel and that's what our problem is also mentioning in order to have the power in the circuit it is enough that one of the batteries work and i do have some switch and all these are connected to some wiring system so I will develop uh, this, it's fault tree and you can follow me. Then I will give you one example to do it yourself in the class. Let me draw this uh, rough diagram here. So that's my lamp here. My drawing is not that good for, so you need to bear with me. and i have my first battery here let's say battery one i believe it is yes 
and then I have my second battery here and then I have my switch here so this is my battery number one this is my battery number two and this is my lamp let me double check if I have taken it correctly yes so what is my objective here my objective is I need to build a fault tree for the event which is the failure on the lighting system so what is my top event my top event is failure on the lighting system I have two possibilities either I can use my circles or I can use my rectangular because this is my top event anything statement it will go in a rectangular because that is my top event here let's look at uh, the causes so this is my first step which I completed that I define my undesirable event. The second step of the fault tree which I just mentioned you in my previous slide is that I need to define the logical reasoning and connect them through some logic gate. When I look at my problem here, the failure on the lighting system, it could be because of uh, fault in the lamp the lamp is a faulty that's why I don't have any lighting here or it could be no power to the lamp lamp is not receiving any power so what could be the first uh, cause for the failure on the lighting system it could be no power to the lamp or it could be because of uh, a faulty lamp faulty lamp this is l here so what are the two possibilities again the failure on the lighting system could be because of no power to the lamp or it could be the the faulty lamp as you see as you can notice i'm using the word or so this thing is indicating me that these two events should be connected using an OR gate. And this is the symbol that we use for an OR gate. Let's see now. This uh, faulty lamp, we cannot further divide it, this thing. So I can use my circle here because that will become my basic event here. I cannot further classify faulty lamp problem here. However, on the other hand, no power to the lamp. Now this uh, system here, it does have the two batteries. So this means I can further classify this power issue. So instead of using a circle, I'm going to use a rectangular. By using the rectangular, it will make it an intermediate event. And now I connect them using the gate folks i will repeat one more time if you're not clear so what was my objective here i want to find out what is the failure on the lighting system i look at my system i can see that uh, this cause could be because of uh, either the lamp is a faulty or there could be no power to the lamp because in my logical reasoning i'm using a word or that is why i put an or gate here let me write here this is my or gate and because i cannot further divide my faulty lamp uh, event here i use a circuit however for the no power to the lamp i use a rectangular because i can further divide it since I can see there are two batteries in, available in this system. So there must be some power available. 
Now, no power to the lamp. This is my lamp here. This one I cannot further subdivide because this is basic event. However, okay, we have a question here. It just uh, came and went. So I think you're talking about the switch. I'm coming to that point, sir. Question is, uh, what about the failure to the switch? I'm coming to that point now. You go one by one, okay? When you do the logical reasoning, you identify the problem one by one. So no power to the lamp. So it could be either uh, because of the broken circuit or there is no power coming from the batteries. So for this event, which is uh, now my intermediate event, I can see that it could be because of the broken circuit or it could be because of no power coming from batteries. No power from batteries. Folks, as you can see, when I'm talking about this uh, sub problem, I'm using a word or. I'm saying that it could be either the broken circuit or it's a no power from batteries. So the gate that I'm using here, it should be my OR gate, which will connect these two events to my intermediate event. So this is my OR gate. As I said, my drawing is not good. So just bear with me, please. Rest assured, this is your OR gate. Okay. No power from the batteries. So this means I have uh, two batteries available here. This event can be further classified. I can further classify this event. So I will, I'm going to take it into a rectangular instead of using a circle here. This is my, this become my intermediate event. And this uh, broken circuit, as we just receive uh, uh, question I can see that uh, there are some switch attached to the my system so that I can further classify this system okay we have a question here from Dosh and I believe just came and went away We have the question, broken wires, broken switches, or no power. Is this, yes, sir. I'm coming to that point, actually. You need to go one by one. The logical reasoning, when you define for a problem, you need to go one by one. I'm going to that uh, point, Dutch, no? I have uh, defined my intermediate events. I just need to link them now to my event. Uh, so this is my problem here. Before I move to uh, further classification, I just want to ask you to sh observe something here. Now, this was my intermediate event when I was dealing with my top event and these events. However, if you look on this event, no power to the lamp, this event become a top event for these two events. Now we can divide our no power from the batteries. As you can see, I have uh, the power was coming from two batteries, which were in parallel. So the failure of uh, no power from the batteries, this event can only occur if I have a failure of both of the batteries, one and the failure of two. So it could be because of uh, failure of uh, battery one.
So in order to have no power, both batteries uh, should fail. So it will it is a failure of battery one and failure of battery two. As you can see, I'm using the word and. So here I'm going to use my and gate in order to connect uh, these three events. One more thing. If this is my failure of the battery one, I cannot further classify this unless I have more uh, system defined. So I'm going to use my circle around it instead of using a rectangular and same with the failure of the battery 2 i'm going to use them as a basic event now because i don't have further classification into the system and they are linked to their their top event which is no power from batteries because i have now basic events i don't need to worry about this uh, no power from batteries event. I'm done with this. Now we need to look on the broken circuit. As we just receive a message, uh, it could be because of the defective switch. This switch is not working, or it could there could be some prop problem with the wire. So because I'm using an OR uh, here, so it could be a defective switch. defective switch or it could be uh, there could be a problem with some wire okay again this uh, defective switch i cannot further classify it i will take it as my basic event and the problem with the wire, this is also my basic event because I cannot further classify it. And I was using the word or here. Either of them fail, it will make the failure of the top event. And they are linked to my top event of them, which is now a broken circuit. Yes, uh, Ashish, your yeah, batteries are not in the series, so both of them should fail. Yes, you're right. Now, in the parallel system, in order to have the failure, both of them should fail, and we use our AND gate. However, in these uh, series, the case is the different. Folks, do you have any question? Uh, about this, how I solve this problem. Okay, so Ayaz is asking why can't it be AND uh, or because there might be discontinuous circuits and uh, faulty batteries at the same at the same time the general issue issue or i would say the general solution that you make is based on your given problem and the understanding you will see once uh, we are going into more details uh, the problems are more defined so you get the whole picture that how you need to further subclassify the problems so I'm going that way in a very slow and steady way. Okay. 
Folks, this is the solution in a very neat uh, form, better than my handwriting and drawing of course. I will share it with you and you can see that. The one thing which I just want to mention here, as you can see that uh, in my solution, I use uh, no power to the lamp on the left side uh, of the OR gate, whereas in the solution it is on the right side, it does not matter wherever you write, as long as it is correct. So I will share this uh, solution with you and you can have a look on this. Folks, uh, this is the class activity that I want you to do it now in the class. Usually I take it sprint and bring it into class when we are in person, but we are not. So I want you to do it uh, now in the class. You need to develop the fault tree for the water system shown in figure one take top event as no water from pump system so first you need to understand uh, this system so i want to identify what is the reason that i don't have any water coming from this pumping system now it is attached uh, there is a valve here and this is attached to two parallel pumps each of them is operating through a engine you need to develop the fall tree for the water system shown in this figure. Take the top event as no water from pump system. You will do this now. I'm going to stop this. Folks, is there anyone in the class who wants to explain how we develop a uh, fault tree this? If there is anyone here who wants to explain or anything.
folks do we have anyone who wants to present its solution or Okay, so we have Darshana here. Now let me see how can I make you a host here. Okay, you are host now, Darshan. Hello. You need to you un you need to unmute yourself. Hello, Professor. Yes, sir. So we have the top event as a no water from pump system. So either we have a, uh, or we we can use the or gate. For this, we have two possibility. Either we have the faulty valve, or uh, we can say that uh, no power from the both of two pumps. Is it right? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So we can also further classify for the pump one and pump two in different manners. Uh, for the pump one, we can say that uh, for the engine one, it might not be work. So we use the OR gate for that one. And the same same way for the pump two, we can define as. So these are the two possibility that's. Uh, water is not coming from to the directly to the pump system okay good folks do you have any question for Darshan here Okay, we have uh, Francis is asking, can I try also? Okay, thank you, Darshan. I will go to Francis now. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I muted. Yes, please. Go ahead, Darshan. Sir, I already spoke good. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. The top events from what I have is from the, the question is that there's no water from the pump system. Yep. So yeah, for there are two possibilities for that to happen is, and they are linked by the all gate. Is either the valve is faulty, mm -hmm. or the valve is closed. Okay. Okay. So for the faulty valve, it can be is that as a result of um, uh, the failure of pump one, mm -hmm. or failure of pump two. Then for Pump one, there is only one uh, outcome that will make it fail. Is that the engine? Engine one fails. And on pump two, the final event will be engine two fails. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I have. Okay, thank you. Folks, do you have any questions uh, for Francis? Okay, thank you, Francis.
we have end user who wants to try as well. Andrew, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, thanks. Um, I have not finished developing, but then the few ones I have done, I have my top event as. Okay, folks, thank you very much. Uh, let me work on this solution. And if you have any questions, I can take it after because we are running out of the time. Are you able to see my screen of uh, class activity? No, okay, let me see. Are you able to see it now? Okay, thank you everyone. Now my top event is no water from the pump system. So folks, this is the solution of uh, our problem here. So this is the problem that, uh, this is the point where I want to identify why the water is not coming. So no water from the pump system, because this is the top event, I'm gonna write it in a rectangle. Now, as uh, every one of you rightly said, it could be because of the valve is blocked or the no water is coming from two, two pumps. Because I'm saying no OR, I'm gonna use my OR gate here and I will connect my two events, no water from the two pumps or it's a valve is blocked. Now this is uh, classified as my primary event or the basic event because I cannot further classify this event here. However, no water from the two pumps can be further classified. That is why I wrote it in a rectangle. So when I look at my problem, no water from two pumps. These were working in a parallel system. So this means both of uh, water should be stopped from both of the pumps. So that's what comes my two events here, no water from pump one and no water from pump two. And because I'm saying and here, this is what is my and gate and I can further classify these uh, event, no water from pump one uh, and no water from pump two in two. The failure of the pump one, it could be this failure or the failure of the engine, which uh, causes this, uh, what the pump not to work. And similar situation for my pump two, it could be the failure of uh, pump two and it could be the failure of the engine. Again, as I'm saying, they are connected through OR gate. That's what I'm using here for no water from pump two and similar situation here for no water from pump one. This is my also. Okay. I will give you some practice questions, lots of practice questions uh, for this.
So folks, keep in mind a fault analysis uh, could be a qualitative one, or it could be a quantitative, or it could be the combination of both of them. The strength of the fault tree as a qualitative tool is the ability to break down an accident, which is the top event, into the root causes. Fault tree analysis is mostly widely used of the tree techniques. In chapter seven of this Baha book, you need to study uh, on the fault tree analysis. And there are some examples here on fault tree analysis that you need to solve. I will make this, uh, this book is available in your library. However, I will make this uh, chapter available on D12 so that you can study and save your time finding the book and the chapter. Today's next topic is the event tree analysis. Event tree is the, it, it identifies the sequence of the events. So used to analyze the event sequence following after an initiating event. The event sequence is influenced by either success or failure of numerous barriers or safety functions and the systems. So the barriers, uh, which are also called as the safety functions, is what we introduce in our event tree. It leads to the set of the possible consequences. So we identify our initial event and then we see what will be our consequences leading to that. What are the different events which will lead to different outcomes from initiating event? The event sequence illustrated graphically. Again, you will draw it in terms of the diagram uh, like as we were doing before, but in a different way, of course where each safety system is uh, model for the two state. Either you will take uh, the success of the safety barrier or the failure of the safety barrier or the safety function. An event tree analysis is primarily a proactive risk analysis method used to identify possible event uh, sequences. But the event tree may also be used uh, to identify and illustrate event sequences both uh, qualitative and quantitative. Again, just like a uh, fault tree analysis, the event tree analysis could be a qualitative, which means without numbers, but a graphical map, and quantitative, which means we solve that uh, graphical map uh, using some numbers. How we construct an event tree? So we take our initiating events, and we identify our barriers, barrier one, barrier two, barrier three, barrier four, whatever the barriers are in a given problems. So enter the initiating event that may give rise to unwanted consequences and safety functions. What are the safety functions? These are your safety functions, barriers. In the next step, we identify either it is a success of the barrier or it's a failure of the barrier. By convention, is keep in mind, by convention, the success is uh, taken at the top on an event, uh, event tree and the failure is uh, taken to the bottom. By that I mean to say, you start from here, you have an initiating event defined and you go from here, then you meet your very first barrier. This is the barrier number one. So there, there could be two possibilities. Either the barrier is successful in stopping that event or it could be a failure. If it is failure, it is going down. If it is success, it is going up here. So this is my success of the barrier one and this is my success, failure of the barrier one. Now, once you cross your barrier one, then you meet your barrier two here. Again, there could be two possibility. One could be that uh, it can be a success. This is the success of my barrier two, or it could be a failure of the barrier two. Similarly, when you come on the failure of the barrier one, there could be two possibilities. It could be the success or it could be a failure. This uh, thing which I draw here, 
mostly if you have the success so this means this barrier was successful and it will just pass by i just gave you this example here which i will explain in the next slide here. so i start with my initiating event here my, my barrier one it is the success of my barrier one as the success is going on the top the failure is going at the bottom and this is my failure of my barrier one now the next i went here i meet my barrier two again there could be two possibilities it could be the success of my barrier or it two or it could be my failure of my barrier two in many times you will see that once uh, the barrier one fails we just uh, bypass our second barrier it, again it depends on the problem which you are studying i do have uh, examples uh, just like uh, faulty analysis and too many practice questions for you to understand this so if the safety function does not affect the course of the accident the accident path proceeds with no branch to the next safety function because this failure is not going to affect uh, the barrier two here. Now, as you can see here, this barrier two was a success here. I don't need to pass through my barrier three and it leads to my final outcome or the consequences. However, when there was a failure in my barrier two, it needs to meet uh, the third bar safety barrier or the safety function. And again, there will be two possibilities. It could be the success of the barrier three. If it is a success, it is able to stop it. If it is a failure, then it will be a catastrophic or it could be an incident or the mishap depending upon the problem. Folks, anything which is coming out of here is the outcome or the consequences of the event. This is a very general layout of the event tree. It will be based on the problem that you are dealing with. I'm going to take this example and elaborate it more. It is saying that develop inventory analysis for the undesired event of a pipe rupture causing water leakage at point K. So let's understand the system here. This is my water tank here. This is my first valve here, which is the excessive flow valve. The water is going to the next valve, which is the isolation valve. And I'm looking to find out at the point K the undesirable event of the pipe rupture. So I started with the pipe rupture. And what is my first barrier here in order to stop uh, the leakage of the water? The first barrier from the system is excessive uh, flow valve. So that's what is the direction of your water here. So this is my first barrier, barrier number one. And this is my second barrier, which is the isolation. I start from my initiating event, which is a pipe rupture, and there could be two possibilities of my barrier number one. Either I can get a success here, or I can get the failure of this barrier. Now let's see what is the system here. So if this is a success, excessive flow well is able to stop the water, this means I don't have to go to my second barrier, which is the isolation valve here. And I can just bypass it and the final outcome, I, I can say that there is no leakage. Folks, is this point clear to everyone? I just want to emphasize it, it is important. You can notice that I missed my second barrier here. Why? Because my excessive flow valve here this well, it was able to stop my water. So I don't need my second barrier in place. So the event tree, the success of the, my first barrier, it will take me to the outcome, which is a no leakage. Now, however, if I have the failure of my excessive flow well, 
then I need to meet my second barrier, which is my oscillation value. So the water was coming here, this barrier field, this field. Now the only dependence I have is on this one, isolation value, which is my second barrier in an event tree. Again, there could be two possibilities. This barrier, the second barrier, isolation well, it can either success or it can either failure. Now, in the isolation well, if it is a success, the leak uh, will happen until the isolation well is closed. However, when there is a failure of this one, we can see that the water will st still keep coming from this point which is the outcome will be a continuous leakage. Folks, am I clear on this or you have any questions? Actually, when I go in this full screen mode, I need to come back to your chat and see if you have any message there or no. Okay, thank you. Again, I just want to emphasize this. By convention, in event tree, the success is uh, taken at the top and the failure is taken at the bottom. If I'm going to share some practice questions and material with you, if you find that he is using failure like this and success like this, that does not mean that you have studied in a wrong way. It just simply means it's a convention he's using it. You can also use it uh, if you want to use this convention, just make sure, but make sure you have the consistency. It's not that for the first barrier, you adopted to take the success on the top and failure at the bottom. But for the second barrier, you, you started to take the failure on the top and the success at the bottom. That will be the wrong thing, of course. Folks, this is your take home activity. I'm gonna make it available to you on D2L so that you can practice, practice it uh, at home. You need to develop an event tree for loss of the cooling event considering four safety functions. Safety functions mean safety barriers in their sequence. One thing you need to keep in mind, the sequence of event is the most important thing in an event tree. Because if I, according to my problem, if I put this one first, let's say I keep it here before my excess flow well, your solution will be wrong. Event tree, just keep in mind, it is based on the sequence of events. The sequence of events is very important. So what I would suggest you, once you are doing this example, just make sure you spend two minutes at least to absorb uh, your problems and understand the sequence of events, what is happening and how it is happening. Once you have the sequence of events uh, clear in your mind, you can write down your safety barrier and start with your initiating events. Folks, this uh, activity, this is the solution once you will work on it. This question is I adopted uh, from this book. It is a uh, crawl and lower book. And you need to read uh, section 12 to this which is based on the event tree it is at page 564 and section 123 there are faulty analysis problems on page 569 in order to save your time uh, to finding out this uh, section of the chapter i will also make this available on d12 now before we leave i just want to mention something once you will solve this event tree, you will see that these are the outcomes or the results coming from your event tree analysis. If I want you to find out what is the possibility of a run runaway, let's say. So there are more than one runaway coming here. This is the uh, probabilities. These are the probabilities. What you need to do, you just need to add the probabilities of the runaway. So this is my runaway, this is my runaway, and this is my runaway situation. So these are three probabilities. 
you need you will add them and then you find your final probability of the runaway or the shutdowns or the continuous operation folks you also need to work on some problems uh, examples from chapter 14 of the bahar book on system safety engineering and risk assessment i will make this uh, chapter available as well this is based on event tree analysis please do solve some examples and if you have any problems please ask me via email if you think that you need to have some discussion on the, them just email me and we can also set up a webex meeting out of the class as well folks sir, do you have any more questions uh, for me for today i will make all of these things available on d2l Okay, folks, it seems like you don't have any questions. I would strong, strongly suggest you to work on some practice uh, examples uh, and the problem which I am giving you. And if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to email me and I will be happy to assist you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, everyone.